Throughout history, every generation has encountered mysteries that proved nearly impossible to solve, and a great deal of those historical mysteries remain unsolved today. But thanks to the advancements in science and technology, many of the world's mysteries are finally being solved many years later, though there are still many strange cases that have yielded no answers and remain unsolved. Number 5. In approximately 1800, a 375-pound stone head was discovered in Bosham near Sussex, England. Not much is known about the relic, including who it was meant to represent and how it ended up in the garden of the Bishop of Chichester's palace, where it was discovered. Thereafter, it was moved to a Chichester museum, where it still remains on display today as part of the Novium Museum collection. But in 2013, two archaeologists decided to investigate further into the historical mystery, and thanks to their work, we now have a much better understanding of the strange object. Doctors Miles Russell and Harry Manley made use of a 3D scanner that managed to enhance the head's facial features and distinctive hairstyle, leading them to the conclusion it was representative of Emperor Trajan, who lived from the year 53 to 117 AD. The head, which measures twice the size of a normal human head, is carved out of Italian marble, and it's believed that it was commissioned by Trajan's successor, Hadrian, when he visited Britain in 121 AD. It was part of a massive statue that was placed at Chichester Harbor, where it served as a greeting to visitors at the cathedral city. Hadrian had a similar statue placed at the Roman harbor of Ostia, though the artists who made the heads remain unknown. Dr. Russell stated that the head is one of the most important finds from that era, and that it would have been very impressive at the time, since it's the largest Roman statue that's ever been discovered in Britain. For 200 years, researchers could only speculate who the statue was meant to depict, mostly due to weathering that occurred when the head spent a long time lying in the ocean. But thanks to new technology, the historical mystery has finally been solved and the legacy of Emperor Trajan lives on. Number 4. The Sailing Stones, located in Death Valley National Park in California, have been a source of bafflement for scientists for decades. The stones are located in a dry lake bed and seem to inexplicably move of their own accord, leaving behind a trail showing how far they've managed to travel. But the mystery lies in the fact that no one has actually seen the stones move, giving rise to a number of theories as to what may be causing the strange phenomenon. Many people believe that it was caused by magnetic fields that slowly moved the stones along. Others theorize that it was caused by some kind of extraterrestrial interference, or that it's merely the work of pranksters. Some scientists posted that it was the result of dust devils that moved the rocks some of which weigh as much as 700 pounds. The most believable theory, however, was that strong winds buffer against the stones, gradually moving them along. But all of these assumptions were eventually disproven, and the strange case remains unsolved. That is, until Ralph Lorenz, a scientist from NASA, decided to investigate further. He was making comparisons between meteorological conditions in Death Valley and those found in the hydrocarbon lakes on Saturn's moon, Titan. But while working in the valley, he became infatuated with the sailing stones, and he decided to conduct his own experiment. He devised a small-scale model in his kitchen using a Tupperware container, water, a rock, and sand. He placed the rock in the container, added enough water to leave just an inch of the rock uncovered, and placed it in his freezer resulting in the rock becoming embedded in a slab of ice. He then placed the slab on a large tray that had a small amount of sand at the bottom, and as soon as he blew on it, the rock started to move effortlessly, leaving a similar trail behind. This led him to the conclusion that under the right winter conditions in the valley, ice could form under the sailing stones, allowing them to move across the lake bed surface, pushed along by a light breeze. Despite his findings, however, there are still some people who believe that the stones are being moved by an inexplicable force, and they prefer for it to remain an unsolved historical mystery. Number 3. 
The strange case of 29-year-old Royal Canadian Navy Lieutenant Barry Troy started on the 25th of February 1958 when he and his fellow members of the 871st Squadron were attending training exercises in the U.S. Navy in Florida. Troy and two fellow pilots were scheduled to take off from Naval Station Mayport, after which they would fly to HMCS Bonaventure on an aircraft carrier that was waiting a few miles offshore. But as they reached an altitude of 200 feet above the ocean, they encountered a thick bank of fog and Troy became separated from the other pilots. He was never seen again, and the only items that were found were his pilot's helmet, his shaving kit, and a wheel from his F2H3 Banshee fighter jet. For the next six decades, no one knew for certain what happened to Troy, though it was assumed that he crashed his plane into the ocean and lost his life. Then in 2018, park ranger Zach Johnson was driving along Florida's Hannah Park when he noticed a pile of debris that had been washed ashore by Hurricane Irma. At first, he thought it was nothing more than a few dirty straps, but he decided to have a closer look after driving past it at least five times. On one of the straps, which turned out to be a parachute harness, he noticed writing that read, quote, LTP Troy. He also found an unopened parachute, a parachute cover, and an inflatable life jacket. The items were found to have belonged to Troy, and after many decades of uncertainty, his family was finally able to get some answers after his strange disappearance. It's believed that Troy became disoriented by the thick fog, causing his plane to crash nose first into the water. The impact would have been massive, explaining why he didn't have a chance to deploy his parachute. The items that were found after being buried in the sand for decades were donated to the Shearwater Aviation Museum, located on the grounds of the Canadian Armed Forces Base in Halifax, where Troy was carrying out his military service. Number 2 In 1996, while excavating near a church tower in Jamestown, Virginia, archaeologists found the skeletal remains of a man that was between 18 and 20 years old when he lost his life. The remains were cataloged as JR102C, since his identity was unknown, but this historical mystery had a lot more in store. Alongside the 5'9 man, who they believed to be from around the year 1600, they found a musket ball that was likely the cause of his demise. This led them to theorize that the man may have been the victim of America's oldest unsolved murder. Facial reconstruction was performed on the skull, but the man's identity remained a historical mystery until 2013 when one of the archaeologists, William Kelso, found some answers that identified both the man and the person who ended his life. Kelso came across evidence of a duel that was held in 1624 between two men, Lieutenant George Harrison and a local merchant, Richard Stevens, though it isn't known what the argument was about. What is certain is that Stevens won the duel, striking Harrison with the musket ball just below his right knee. It was found that Harrison was standing sideways when he was hit, as would be normal practice in a duel, and the resulting damage to his leg would have been enough to ensure his demise within only a few short minutes. Stevens would go on to become a court commissioner, who was often at odds with John Harvey, a largely unpopular governor of Virginia. In fact, the two men disliked each other so much, on one occasion in 1635, they ended up in a fist fight that saw Stevens lose a number of teeth due to Harvey striking him with his cane. The following year, Stevens passed away, and his widow ended up marrying his rival, Harvey. Not much else is known about Harrison's life, but the dark history behind his passing has finally been solved thanks to the tireless work of those who discovered his burial site more than 300 years after he passed away. Number 1 On the 19th of November, 1941, the HMAS Sydney 2 was sailing hundreds of miles off the coast of Western Australia, near the Indian Ocean during the Second World War. But their voyage was soon end in tragedy when they spotted a suspicious merchant ship and decided to investigate. Sailors on the vessel claimed that it was a Dutch ship, but when they failed to send back secret codes requested by the Sydney, it was discovered to be a notorious German raider called the Camoran. 
the German vessel fired on the Sydney from one nautical mile away, causing massive damage and ending the lives of everyone on board. Or so it was thought. When the Sydney failed to return to port, searches were conducted by air and sea. But only surviving members of the Comoran were found drifting in their life rafts. Debris from the Sydney was eventually recovered, but the two ships' wreckages were left undiscovered until 2008. Three months later, on the 6th of February, 1942, an object was spotted floating out at sea by lookouts on Christmas Island, an external territory of Australia. The harbour master sent out a boat for further investigation, and it was found to be a Carly life raft containing the body of a man dressed in a blue boiler suit. Shrapnel was found embedded in the outer covering of the raft, and the marine growth indicated that it had been adrift for a long time. The man was removed from the raft and quickly buried in an area known as Flying Fish Cove, and he became known as the Unknown Sailor. A search for the unmarked grave was undertaken in 2001, but it wasn't found until 2006 when a second search was launched. DNA was extracted from the man's remains and it revealed that the man was right-handed. He had blue-green eyes and light brown hair. Scientists were also able to learn that he likely grew up in a coastal area, since there was evidence that he grew up on a marine-rich diet. He still had all of his wisdom teeth and had several gold fillings in some of his other teeth, showing that he had access to high-quality dental care during his early adult life. As for his ancestry, it was likely that he hailed from Australia, Scotland, or Ireland. On the 19th of November, 2021, exactly 80 years after his passing, Australian War Memorial staff were able to identify the unknown sailor as 20-year-old Thomas Wellesby Clark, thanks to mitochondrial DNA submitted by Colin Clark, a farmer from Queensland who was found to be Thomas's nephew. Thomas's remains were transferred to a Commonwealth war grave in Geraldton, where he'll be remembered for the war hero that he was, rather than resting in an unmarked grave. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.